Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Early Access Podcast, episode 91. I'm your host, Angelo, and thank you for checking us out again. Um, hopefully, you are listening through the new uh, founded Libsyn stream. If not, uh, maybe you're watching through youtube.com slash early access podcast. Um, so, as we continue to go forward here with the new changes and everything, um, I just want to reiterate um, if you've been paying attention, I mean, probably, but. Um, if you're a developer or a publisher and you have an indie game or an early access title that you'd like reviewed on uh, the YouTube channel, like I tend to do hour-long honest first looks where I just play through the first hour of the game uh, to give people an honest idea of what to expect out of your early access title. And then I'll update as I go along uh, through the podcast as I play new games. Um, again, though, unfortunately, I haven't really played much. Um, Again, it's slow this time of year. There's been a couple games that I've uh, that I've seen. I haven't really picked anything up though. I haven't. I just started getting back into emailing guys. So hopefully within the next couple weeks, I'll, I'll start getting some responses. But um, you know, it's been a lot of work switching the email over to the new um, to the Gmail email. So like, I'm trying to reestablish contacts and get in touch with everybody and let them know that I'm changing the email address to that one. Um, so, but yeah, if if you're a developer or you're a publisher and um, you either want to get in touch with me for um, a review key, if you want to give me a review key, that'd be great. Um, or if you'd like to um, s- come onto the show so I can start doing uh, interviews, earlyaccesspodcast at gmail.com is the email address. And that also goes for any listeners that have any questions or have any suggestions for the show or games for me to check out. Um, like I said, I in the last couple episodes, I am trying to stream more often. So I'm, if you have games that you'd like to see me play, um, recently I've been streaming MechWarrior online just because that's what I've been into. Um, but I've been sh- trying to stream Tuesday, th- uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from around, you know, like five to six p.m. Eastern time, only for about an hour. Or so um, yesterday I got on a little bit early. Today I didn't get on, um, but. That's basically where it's going to be at for the time being. Um, but going forward, uh, hopefully the show morphs more into a- an interview um, style podcast where um, I get to actually talk to a couple, um, you know, get to talk to publishers and developers working on their games just so we have a little bit more to talk about. Because um, I'm super interested in that process about like how early access works. Um, what it's like working, like what it's like trying to get people to to get like, to buy your game to support your game before it's finished. Um, I'm sure it's a hard process, um, but that also brings me to my first topic uh, for the for the show, which is Tom Clancy's The Division. So I've been watching a lot of videos of this game recently, and I'm actually super interested in in uh, what's going on here. Um, I don't know if if it's warranted though, because from some of the stuff I've seen of this game, so if you don't know what The Division is, The Division is kind of, um, so it's a third person shooter, like cover based shooter, think, um, you know, Gears of War style. Um, So, you know, you're going to be running up behind things, sliding into cover. Um, It's a lot of cover based shooting, which is kind of different for for the Tom Clancy um, games. However, they did just do... um, the Phantoms, uh, I think it's a free-to-play game, which is actually really awesome, which is also a cover-based shooter, um, but I'm pretty sure it's first-person. Then I might be, th- I think it might be third-person, actually. Um, or maybe you're able to swap back and forth between the two. I can't remember. I haven't played it in a while, but I did get way into that for a little while, like last year. Um, so this is taking what Destiny did with the first-person pseudo-MMO um, where, you know, Destiny is not really an MMO, whereas you're always playing with other people. Like, massive multiplayer is kind of a stretch considering most of the stuff in that game is instanced. This game seems to be going along the same path where it's a lot of, um... It's a lot of instance co-op experiences. So there's going to be, like, a hub area similar to, um... I forget what it's called, the Citadel or whatever it is in Destiny where all the people get together there. It's going to be similar to that, but it's still going to be a lot of co-op style missions um, in this game. But it's going to be, you know, very similar. You're going to be getting new loot. You're going to be crafting. You're going to be upgrading. 
um, different skills and abilities. Um, it's kind of it's kind of interesting to me just because you don't see too many um, serious first-person shooter um, RPGs. There is some first-person shooter games similar to this out there, um, but the like the the realistic tactical first-person shooter in an open world air quotes open world is something that this game is doing that's a little bit different I've never seen anything like it um, so I'm just on the website here and like I, I don't, if you haven't seen any video of it go check it out um, it looks really good though the, like it's very interesting looking um, you know it looks like a like a good first person shooter like from artistic like the style wise it takes place in Manhattan um, from what I understand, like there was like a virus outbreak, and now there's three different factions that are fighting over the limited supply of, I guess, supplies. Like the limited supply of supplies left in the city. So you're fighting with these other factions. That's there's really not a lot of details yet, but as this is an early access um, podcast, uh, I do all, I like do want to point out that there is a beta coming up for uh, for the division. So on the 28th of January, you can go, you'll be able to play in the, the beta for the division, which comes out in March. Uh, I believe it's um, somewhere in, in uh, first, it's either the first week of March or the last week of March. I, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, actually, I could probably check right here on the pre-order form. Um, pre-order, uh, let's see, standard. When does it say it releases? Uh, and it doesn't. Um, but if you pre-order the game right now, though, you do get access to the beta. If you're pre-ordering it on the Xbox One console, you get a 24-hour. You get into the beta 24 hours early, and then which is on the 28th of January, and then on the 29th of January is when the PC and the PS4 um, beta starts. So you can go check that out. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot. To look at in this game and and the take in it, it's really going to come down to like playing this game i don't know if we're going to get enough out of videos and whatnot until it actually releases just because of the the always online aspect of it but from what i understand you can also play this game mainly solo to i mean just solo like there is a way to play this as a solo player even though you still have to be connected to the internet um i'm sure that has to do with like the loot and server stuff but you'll still be able to play the game solo. But I don't like. No one really knows how that's going to work right now because, from what I understand, a lot of the YouTubers and the media that has gotten their hands on it so far have all played the same um, test build. So they all have the same idea about like what the game is for that very limited slice of what this game is, and that's a vertical slice that they want you to see that ubisoft wants you to see so we can't really take we got to take that with a grain of salt because that's what they're providing so of course it's going to be you know skewed to look better than maybe the entire game does but i'm super interested in it there's something about it that just piques my interest and um you know hopefully oh that's cool there's like a winner there's a hockey like billboard on this one building what is this supposed to be uh so it's supposed to be madison field hospital Kind of looks like Madison Square Garden. Um, so yeah, The Division. If you're interested in, in that style of game, there is a beta coming up. So uh, link is in the show notes for the for the website. You can click on the link, pre-order it there, and get access to the beta that way. Um, but yeah, I haven't really played much. Like I still I've still been playing a lot of uh, Mech Warrior, Mech Warrior Online. That game's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, go shoot mechs if you like shooting laser beams and whatnot. You'll have a lot of fun with that. Um, so I want to say congratulations to, the, to a couple games that have left early access. The first one I was following for a long time, and I'm very happy for the guys over at, uh, at Awfully Nice Studios. They had actually gotten me a copy of this game pretty early on because I reached out to them on Facebook when I first started the website and the podcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they were like one of the first companies that I really dealt with. And that game is called The Bug Butcher. Now, it officially launched on the 19th, so yesterday. It's 639. Go pick it up. Uh, it, 
it, it's a beautiful looking game. The art style is amazing. It's a side, well, it's like a level based uh, shooter where you're shooting up at like different creatures as they fall into the level. It's a really interesting game. It's a lot of fun. It's very challenging. The art style is all hand drawn and it's it's amazing looking. Um, it's just got a, a wonderful charm and an amazing and it's like I can't get over it. like it's just a very awesome looking game. Um, they, all the creatures are colorful and horrifying looking and it's just a lot of fun so you can go check that out it's pretty cheap uh, for, for what you get out of it um, it's on sale until the 26th of this month and out of 440 reviews it's got a 97 percent positive um, definitely worth checking out it, it's just a really cool looking game and the gameplay is there uh, the graphics are there and they put a lot of work into this over the last year um, throughout early access. I watched this game go from what was a bunch of monster concept images that they were posting and like um, monster gifts that they were posting on their Facebook page and to see them finally release the game is just is amazing. So go check out The Bug Butcher. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. I can't, can't give them enough props. Um, so the next game, I never played this game, but from what I understand, it's fucking amazing. And I did reach out to them a while ago, and I never actually got my hands on it. But it's uh, the it's called Darkest Dungeon. So it's twenty bucks. It's not on sale, which I'm surprised considering it just uh, left early access. But I can see why not, because it's already got eleven thousand reviews, eighty-seven percent positive. So this is um, it's a turn-based RPG roguelike game where you're leveling up your different um, characters like your your team and you're fighting against different monsters and you're like uh, you can also level up like your base and everything like that so there is a sense of of progression as you play through the game which is uh, something I look for in a um, in a roguelike R RPG where there's some kind of persistent progression I don't like the RPG like the roguelikes where like it's literally just run after run after run and you're just trying to get better where you don't actually progress like it's all based on whether or not you feel like you're getting better if you're not getting better then the game kind of gets stale and stagnates at some point but by having some form of progress uh, like persistent progression it allows you to continue to play through these runs consistently and actually get somewhere with the game so it doesn't feel like every time you start another run or you lose it like you know you lose stuff you don't feel like you're starting from scratch which is you know one of the problems I have with those kind of roguelikes and it's one of the problems I have with uh, the open world survival games without persistent um, stats or skills or anything like that because you feel like you put in so much work only to lose it all and I understand like that's how um, these kind of games are supposed to work but at the same time it's like I want to feel like I'm getting rewarded for what I'm putting into the game and sometimes it doesn't really do that and from what I understand though this game does a really good job with it from what it, like all I've heard is positive things about this game it's very hard um, they changed a bunch of stuff from the early access so even if you already have it and you and you played it during the early access go go play it again because I from what I understand they changed a lot of the mechanics they they streamlined some stuff they made some stuff harder um, basically overhauled the entire game for the launch so darkest dungeon just launched so congratulations to uh, the guys at Red Hook Studios for a successful early access campaign um, you know, I always like seeing games go through early access especially over the last year with games that I've seen get launched in the early access and you know within a year they're already putting out their full title like early access should you know you got some games that have been at early access for years now and it doesn't seem like they're getting anywhere as far as progression seems but so those two games have launched out of um, the early access program and these two games just moved in so the first game that I pulled that looks interesting and I actually just got done writing the email to these guys because I'm really interested in checking this out um, it's called Scrap Mechanic. Uh, it's twenty dollars. It is in early access, which is on the little high, a little high side for me, but it seems really awesome. Um, so it's a sandbox multiplayer game. You know, you're building shit, 
etc. You're used to that kind of stuff. Um, now it's got 214 reviews, 90% positive. So what this game does, it, so it's a third person building game, third person slash first person um, sandbox game. But what it is it, that's cool about it that's different than other ones is like you can actually build like machinery. So you can build um, cars, you can build, uh, you know, I, well, that looks like a fucking floating raft, like a hover jet. There's an ad at, somebody built an ad at. So basically you can build all kinds of stuff. You can be, build like train tracks, you can build all kinds of machinery, which is something different for uh, an open world sandbox game. It seems like they're putting a lot of work into separating themselves from the rest of the, the v very generic um, open world survival game sandbox and making just a fun building sandbox game. Um, so from what it looks like though right now it's just that. It's just like a third person, first person um, sandbox game where you play with other people trying to build stuff. I would like to see them build in some more RPG elements because otherwise this kind of stuff gets pretty boring. Um, but you can go check out, they have a whole bunch of videos on, on their Steam page. And I'm sure if you just Google or YouTube, you can find more stuff. But they break down a couple different of the... Uh, ow, punch my desk. Um, they, they do point out a couple different types of things that you can build in, in the videos on the Steam page. So go check that out, Scrap Mechanic. Hopefully I can get a copy of it. Um, and I can get a video up just to, you know, showcase what this game is all about because it looks really interesting. Go check out the the video for that. All right, so the latest game I got I pulled is called Garbage Day. Now this is mostly positive with 60 reviews, 76% positive, $15. Um, so now this is it looks like a you know a voxel based open world sandbox game. But I think it's interesting because it's actually got a story for an open world sandbox game. It says you're stuck in a time loop. And you live in the same day and over and over again. So basically, it's Groundhog's Day. So in but in this game, you you actually have like a, a point. Like you're not just building. Like you're not sandboxing and doing stuff for nothing. Um, you're trying to explore and find out how to get out of the time loop. Um, I don't know how well they follow through with that story beat. But it seems cool that they're trying to do something different with an open world survival game, like sandbox game. So you can do the same stuff that you would in a normal uh, open world game, which is interact with anything. Uh, this says you can kill innocent people, but you can go to work. You can basically do the same thing. Like you can do whatever you want. But you also have an overall, like an umbrella mission where it's just like, but you have a purpose if you, if you so desire to try to break the time loop much like in Groundhog's Day where Bill Murray has to try to get out of the time loop that he's in of reliving Groundhog's Day over and over again. I think it's a cool concept for an open world sandbox game. That's the only reason I pulled it. There were several other early access games that I could have probably pulled but they either had negative reviews or they just didn't seem interesting. Um, you know the graphics in this seem pretty simple. It's just you know a 3D um, game. It looks like it's probably done in Unity or something like that. So you've seen this style of game before, though. Um, you know, Minecrafty, very, you know, lots of polygons, very cartoony, colorful. Um, but the interesting aspect is the story part. So, garbage day. Go check it out. Fifteen bucks. I've seen worse, but it seems like people. Um, seems like most people are enjoying it. Um, there is a couple negative reviews, um, you know, complaining about it not being ready. But I, I did click on the their website, and it seems that um, I think it was their website I was looking at. No, it might have been the last one. Um, they do seem to be working on the game, so of course it's early access. So there's going to be problems where it's not working 100% optimally. But you know, as with any game in early access, you got to give them time. And if it seems like an interesting concept to you. You know, go give them your 15 bucks and help them out with their with their game. Um, but that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I want to thank you again for checking out the show. For the time being, uh, don't forget to go check out earlyaccessmedia.com and click through the Amazon banner at the bottom of the page. Use that whenever you purchase anything. It really does help out the show. I want to thank whoever just recently purchased. Um, I think it was Printer Toner. Uh, you know, it, it was worth $5 in in uh, my kickback so I mean it just goes to show you you know how, how how much that's really worth 
and it does help out because you know hosting fees aren't cheap hosting on Libsyn isn't cheap um, so every every dollar counts you can also check out patreon.com I may have to rely on that a little bit more uh, going forward as I shut down the websites and try to change focus for the, for the future um, but that's going to do it for this episode guys again thank you for listening don't forget early access uh, podcast uh, early access PC on Twitter early access podcast on YouTube go like the Facebook page um, yeah and email us if you have anything you want to say early access podcast at gmail.com but until next time guys this is Angela with early access podcast and you know be awesome <laughs>